So Calvin Cater comes in, Fight Island, gets the job done against Dan Ige. Congratulations to him. He is a professional through and through. It's one of the things that I really like about Calvin Cater. He even said it afterwards in the post fight. He was like, I'm a professional, man, 26 fights. I always show up, I'm in shape, I'm on weight, and I come to fight. And not a lot of people can say that. And he's telling the absolute truth. It's one of the things that Conor McGregor always used to say. He used to talk about Aldo, not sure if he's gonna show up, he's gonna back out. He's talked about Khabib for doing it, talked about Tony for doing it, so it's actually pretty funny. But it's nice, and I gotta imagine from a promoter's perspective, it is huge when you can actually count on a guy. You don't need any insurance. I give him a weight, I give him a date, He's going to show up and he's going to be ready to do business. And that's what Calvin Cato brings to the table. And he did it again last night with Dan Ige. Showed up and got the win against Ige. I had him winning 49-46, four rounds to one. So all in all, it was a good performance. And I'll be honest, Ige looked better than I thought he would. I thought Ige was going to be more aggressive and come forward. And that was going to play into Cater's hands. He didn't. He let Calvin Cater come forward. He laid back a little bit more. He stayed on the outside a little bit more. And even as the shorter man, he was able to see a little bit of success. He was able to get some shots off. Particularly, the most memorable shot for Ige was in the second round when he landed that left hook. You know, now he's got, he put Calvin's, no, Calvin Cater's nose to turn in a corner. You know, pretty, it was pretty significant. Started bleeding a lot, even in the post fight when he was talking with, I want to say, uh, oh, John Anik and Bisbing. Um, he blew his nose on a towel and some more blood came out. So, I mean, it was a good shot. Probably broke his nose. It, at the very least, I know it was broken before. He was dealing with some problems with it from the Jeremy Stevens fight, which was like two months ago, maybe even last month and a half. Nevertheless, even though that happened midway through the second round, Cater was able to come out with the victory. And he did it kind of like I thought he would. Figured out the timing and the rhythm, maintained things from the outside, worked the jab, able to follow up with that laser right hand straight down the pipe caused some damage. He beat Ige up. By the end, he was looking pretty busted up. It was a good performance. After the fight, naturally, people start asking, hey, what do you think's next? So he came into this fight ranked sixth. He was fighting a guy underneath him in Ige who was 10. And the division, you know, 145 is pretty live. 145 stacked. I mean, we just saw Volkanovski and Holloway go at it two times in a row and how that turned out. Personally, I'm of the opinion that Max Holloway should have come out with that victory in that rematch, but that's neither here nor there. I've got another video where I talk about bad judging. That being said, Volkanovski is the champ. Volkanovski stated in the past that he wants to be an active champion. So you've got Cater, who's on this run. He's gaining some popularity. Comes off this performance with Ige. And he says, hey, give me a shot at the champ. I'm a legitimate contender. I'm good for it. And I think he's got a point. I definitely think that if Calvin Cater were to get the next shot at the belt, there would be some people who would squawk a little bit. But ultimately, I, I, I mean... You can make the case for that. That's a legitimate contender getting a legitimate shot at the belt. The question becomes, if you're Calvin Cater, should you take that fight next? Everybody everybody wants the title. I get it. Since the very first day you put on a pair of gloves, you were thinking about winning the world title. If you weren't, you would not have made it to this point. The path is far too difficult. There's far too many obstacles. You have to sacrifice. You have to train, diet, cutting weight, traveling. So when a guy gets to this point, if he gets a title shot offered to him, if the boss man rings him up, Uncle Dane is on the phone. Hey, do you want this title shot? 99.9% .9 of guys are going to take it. Of course you're going to take it. It's the, You're fighting for the gold belt. Are you kidding me? But there's a little bit more to it than that. There's, 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 there's a few other things going on, right? So one of those things, for example, is the fact that if you lose that shot, the odds that you're going to get another shot immediately at the belt, very slim. Probably going to have to go and win at least two more fights and look impressive in one of them if you wanna get another shot at the belt. Maybe even three more fights. God forbid you get a loss in one of those, who knows how far back your next opportunity at the belt can go. So if you get offered this fight a little bit early, if maybe you're not quite ready to get it and you go in there, it can actually be pretty detrimental. So should he take it right away? I think Volkanovski would have the answer for him. I think he'd be able to tear that front leg up. Cater's shown that he's susceptible to leg kicks in the past. I think Volkanovski would be really good at that. And that way, he, Volkanovski would use those leg kicks to control the timing, the distance, the rhythm of the fight in the same way that he did in the first fight with Max Holloway. Off of that, he would be able to land his other shots. And I think Cater would get in trouble. I mean, Cater's tough. He'd still be able to get off. He would still be able to do some good work. But I don't think he's quite developed enough yet that he would be able to overcome the leg kicks that Volkanovski's shown that he can bring to the table. And with that one thing alone, he's going to be able to control enough of the fight to throw off what Cater's going to need to be able to do to win. Because Cater's got to control the distance. He's going to have to control the timing and the flow, particularly with his jab. 
so that he can start to get off his other combinations with that right hand and be the taller, longer guy. If Volkanovski is able to, to disrupt that whole rhythm with the leg kicks, I don't think it works out well for Cater. He's got amazing potential. I absolutely think that he can get that, get that under control and at a high enough level that he's going to be able to beat Volkanovski, but I don't know if that should be his next fight. Either way, I love this one. Loved what he brought against Ige. Let me know what you guys think. Did you really like what he did in this fight? Did you, was it a dominant enough victory? Do you think he should get another? Do you think that his next fight should be in that Volkanovski? And if he does get it, how do you think he's going to do?